Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Today we're going to go through Twitter, see what their, people are talking about, see what upcoming events or news is coming out or being released this week. Uh, obviously it's going to be commodity, stock market, financial, slash wealth related stuff. So I'm going to fire off a whole bunch of my opinions as we go through it. Hopefully you guys are entertained or you get something out of it and uh, we'll dive right in and start right now. So if you want to follow me, it's at finding underscore finance. And if you want to join the website, finding value.com, uh, we go over a lot of stuff uh, during the meetings on the weekends. So coming on down, it says, what's something you can give a 30 minute presentation on without any preparation? I can actually do a 30 minute presentation on a whole bunch of things. Uh, I could do it on driving. Uh, right, you know, like racing around the track, driving. I'm not saying that I'm a race, you know, professional race car driver, but I could obviously go over a lot of tips on how to pr prepare a car, how to uh, take take pretty good lines. Maybe not the best of all lines, but pretty much the racing line. Um, I could do 30 minute presentations on financial topics, technical analysis, how to fix cars. Uh, I could do it on, on deadlifts or weightlifting techniques and all that stuff. Um, but those are, I, I would say my, my wheelhouse of the things that I really enjoy, I could probably give a 30 minute presentation on any of those things. And that's, um, I was very big in weightlifting, very big in baseball and hockey, uh, very big in, into cars and mountain bikes and motorcycles. And, uh, those are probably some things that, that I really do enjoy. I also do a lot of health related stuff. So I, I have dived into a little bit of diet, uh, what causes cancers and all that stuff. I could maybe even present that, but I would not be comfortable <laughs> presenting that. Um, coming on down, we got, they moved from Bay area to Charlotte. They like to return, but California is home for us. And eventually we'll go back. I don't know if stuck is the right word, but a 2.62% interest rate is hard to give up right now. And I think a lot of people are in this situation. Um, when I lived in California, uh, I lived in multiple places. I lived by uh, San Diego and Carlsbad. Uh, I lived in Huntington Beach. I lived in San Luis Obispo. Uh, I lived in kind of all up and down the coast uh, from Central Coast down to uh, South, South, uh, Southern California. And a lot of people in California do not want to leave California. I understand that the weather there is amazing. I get it. Uh, but there's also a lot of negatives. Wherever I've lived, there's always been positives. There's always been negatives. So, um, yeah, I, that's all I'm going to say about this. And uh, I, can, I understand the people who are in California, for some reason, they do not like leaving that place. So Peter says, in a few weeks, oil supply <clears throat> will drop fast as OPEC cuts hit EA, or EIA data and planned SPR releases end. Bears want you to believe demand will collapse by then, but it won't. And as inventories draw, the illusory, illusory weak demand will give way to panicky repositioning. Cruel summer. Uh, so that's his opinion. I'm, I'm in the camp. I, in all honesty, guys, it doesn't even matter. I'm going to continue to add these cheap oil and natural gas uh, companies that I like, and I'm just going to wait. Uh, I do believe that there's going to be an imbalance. I do believe that we threw hundreds of millions of barrels to keep the price down, and I don't think the demand has been killed. So I, I'm in the camp as him. I, obviously, I don't know the exact timing. Uh, he, a lot of these guys are trying to say when that timing is going to be. I'm just going to continue to buy when it's uh, of good value. It's that simple and just wait. Uh, I'm doing that with everything. I'm doing that with uh, all of the sectors that I think that are very cheap. Uh, Charlie Bellillo says, uh, tomorrow's news today. So this is what he thinks. <clears throat> Breaking after 10 straight rate hikes, the Fed pauses, holding interest rates at 5 to 5.25%. Uh, well, that's his opinion. So we do have uh, news being released today. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't think it really matters which direction the Fed chooses. It's not going to 
fix the problem. And I think the, the problem or the cause of not all of the inflation, but some of the inflation, and it will persist, is the demographic coming through home buying years and the spending, peak spending years, all that stuff. It's not, I don't think the, <clears throat> the interest uh, rates do not stop that spending. It, it, it slows it down a little bit, but it doesn't stop it. Uh, so another guy says, breaking CPI 4% versus 4% expectations year over year, 0.4 versus 0.4 on a month, core 0.4%. Stocks surged on the news, but, are, are, but now back to even. Golden commodities up, dollar down, pause incoming tomorrow for the FOMC. That's what everyone is predicting. And we'll see what happens tomorrow when they release, or today, it should be today, when they release that information. Uh, China rumored to be planning broad stimulus measures as economic recovery lags. Um, we did see pretty big moves in commodities, and maybe this has something to do with it as well. We've got <clears throat> important. The company you work for is not your family. You don't owe your job anything beyond the work you're being paid for. Prioritize your own growth and well-being over misplaced loyalty. And don't ever feel guilty about leaving a job. Companies are not families. They're businesses. It's a business relationship, and their primary goal is to make money. If they can make more money by laying you off, they will do it without hesitation. If you have an opportunity to better yourself, don't feel guilty about taking it. All I'm going to say here is... <clears throat> I do feel that the place that I work at did kind of, I mean, a lot of it's dependent on your immediate boss. And if you don't have a good immediate boss that will stick up for you, I mean, you're not going to go anywhere. And <clears throat> I've done some, some big projects that I absolutely killed. I, I did it better than anyone else in that stinking company with my job title could do. And I, I don't feel like I was really adequately um, compensated for it. So what, what does a person naturally do? You, you've got a couple of options. One, you can leave the company. Uh, you can leave the company. You're, you're like, peace out, see ya. And you go somewhere else to work and you can potentially make more money, get a different job and continue that progress of climbing uh, the hierarchy or climbing the ladder, whatever you want to call it. Another thing you can do, which a lot of people also do, is you just stop working hard. Um, a lot of people, they call it quiet quitting. I mean, obviously, you can take it to some extent. You don't have to quit in its entirety. Uh, but you can kind of just ride and just say, you know what, I'll, I'll do the work uh, to an acceptable level, but I'm not going to go above and beyond. I'm not going to work a bunch of overtime because if I'm not being compensated uh, for my hard efforts, at least the self-perceived hard efforts, then um, I'm just going to kind of ride it. And I would say the majority of people in these large corporations um, are in that type of mentality or mode. Uh, what you need to do if you're a manager is you need to identify those that are really motivated and keep them motivated, keep them pulling uh, and, and progressing forward and giving them more money. If you don't do that, they're either going to leave because most of the good people have options uh, or you're just going to turn them into, um, you know, you're going to turn that lion into a, a workhorse and then the workhorse goes into a dog. And then eventually everyone at your company is going to be a bunch of dogs and the dogs will just rally, you know, in the company and you lose all the lions because whether it's HR, human resources practices, or it's the uh, managers that just don't promote based off of certain sets of circumstances. And you can obviously, it, it's very dependent on your manager and they need to know exactly what is good and what is bad and what is difficult and what is easy. Uh, a lot of managers are, they're just there to manage and they don't really know what it takes to get things done. They don't see the, the genius in things that are hard that someone can do very easily. Uh, it says you get wealthy by concentration. You stay wealthy by diversification. You run into trouble when you mix up the two. Yeah, so what, I, what I'm going to say here is if you want to get wealthy, you, you, you do it by concentration. I totally agree. But uh, you better have your timing and you better know how to value assets well because you can get absolutely slaughtered if that happens.
And I agree, you can stay wealthy by diversification, but you can't really grow your wealth. You kind of have to concentrate a little bit on really good opportunities. <clears throat> so concentration can be your concentrated in commodity stocks, basically what I'm doing to some extent. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically combining concentration and diversification to some degree. Um, I have some diversification where I, I don't, it's more of a safety play and, and that's my physical metals, but I also think they're very well, well priced. Uh, then I concentrate into some sectors that I think can really move. Uh, some of the mining companies, some of the exploration companies, eh, I got some. Uh, and then I think there's really good value over in oil and that gas. So I concentrated in what I think are the best companies with good fractals, good technical analysis charts, all those things. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hybrid. I don't, I'm not totally concentrated. I'm not totally diversified. Why are bond yields up today when inflation is falling? <clears throat> good question. And that's what I'm trying to figure out because we've got these falling inflation rates. And then I, I continue to see strength in the interest rate charts. And I'm like, man, this is confusing. What direction are we going? Because things are all split and mixed at the moment. Uh, if inflation's falling and we're going to hit a recession, we should be seeing interest rates or yields fall. But why are they going up? Is, are, are, is the market expecting another wave of inflation? Are we going to increase interest rates uh, from the Federal Reserve? What, what's going on here? And, and we're going to continue to watch it. We'll continue to talk about it. But <clears throat> good observation here. Uh, pretty much everyone I meet who retires before 40 has been in engineering, financial industry, or business. That's probably what I've seen as well. Um, I think there's a lot in real estate as well, like real estate agents or mortgage brokers. I see some of those guys making quite a bit of money as well. Um, and maybe that's the financial industry. <clears throat> uh, interest in mid-cap Canadian energy stocks at a new low, as measured by Bloomberg search interest, according to that guy. Definitely matches the mood right now and is odd considering rock-solid balance sheets, high free cash flow yields, and growing buybacks and dividends. I'm happy to be going against the herd on this one. So this is the Bloomberg search interest for oil and gas stocks. Here's the seniors. The mid caps are definitely diving down. Uh, it says average search ranks uh, rank remains better than mid caps. However, search interest has clearly subsided. Peaks and valleys can indicate sentiment. With such low search interest, contrarian investors might find appeal now in the sector. Yeah, I, I I'm actually getting more bullish on commodities as people become more bearish. <clears throat> so. That's kind of what you have to do is you buy when everyone else is bearish or the sentiment is really low. Um, let's go back to the, there we go. So Logan says, it was a credit boom that didn't tie itself to 30-year mortgages. People forget we had rates between 3.25 and 5% from 2012 to 2019 without a massive growth rate in prices and the weakest housing recovery ever. So. <clears throat> that's what we're seeing here. We see this big move lower. We've come back up. We've moved back down again in terms of purchase index. Uh, but purchase index obviously doesn't mean the house price. It's just the purchase index. So wanted to tell you on that. Uh, it says, I got to admit the fake out was a complete ambush to me. Didn't see that coming. Uh, so what people were doing is they were basically looking at the two-year yield. And they're saying, oh, we broke out to the downside. It's done. This could be a slingshot where we slingshot higher. And we're getting yields flinging around uh, in both directions. To me, right now, it looks like they could go higher. Uh, higher on the two-year, higher on the 10-year, higher on the 30-year. I think they could all go higher. Uh, so is there going to be a pause tomorrow? I'm not sure. I, don't, I, I would almost say that the market is pricing in a move to the upside almost. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> Interest rates have been very resilient, especially if we're especially if we're going to have a recession. Uh, this doesn't match the narrative that's out there. 
Uh, here's Forces Metals looking awesome. He's got a big, long down, downtrend line that's being broken to the upside. Uh, just be be patient here, guys. Wait for this to, um, you know, it, it, it may take time to move up. I'm already in all this stuff, so I it doesn't really matter. I'm just sitting in it uh, for whatever, wherever it goes, whatever it does, I'm going to be sitting in it for a, a good long time. Uh, here's Grady. He says, said three and a half years ago, real inflation is coming. It is here. It is now here. This is not the point in time to be heavy in fiat cash, especially not the U.S. dollar. Do not fight what's coming because then you will lose. This time it is for real. The commodities bull market inflation insurance. Uh, so that's Grady's opinion. I'm in the same camp. I think interest rates breaking out of that 40-year downtrend line. Yeah, we're going to have an inflation problem. And, and you know what? Interest rates continue to go higher. They are, they are not cooling off, guys. If we're in some sort of recession, I mean, maybe we get a recession and interest rates go up. That's kind of where I'm at. Uh, but that's where I've got it. I don't think there's anything else I'm going to talk about here. Uh, we'll end it there. Uh, if you guys like the content, give me a thumb up. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the website. Um, and that's all I've got for now. Uh, we'll catch you guys later. This is Finding Value.